It's hard to believe seven weeks have already passed this NFL season. And at this point, it's time to change things up. So instead of the biggest fails of the week, I'm just gonna directly call trash like I see it, like the entire NFC South, or whatever the Lions did on Sunday, or the Dolphins getting their tushes pushed in. Straight trash. And all that shit for week seven is coming up right after this. Hey, look, if you are a defensive coordinator in the NFL, there are a couple things that keep you up at night. Apparently one of them is Zach Wilson. Well, you actually have a lot in common with that guy. You both need a good night's sleep. Thanks to Bear Mattress, the sponsor of this video, we have that part covered. This month, Bear is letting me offer my viewers 40% off their mattresses, which is higher than any discount they have ever offered on site. So stay tuned until the end. Bear is a premium mattress designed to upgrade your sleep, improve your lifestyle and overall quality of life, and it's conveniently shipped to your door for free. What you do first is take the bear sleep quiz because in case you didn't notice, everybody is different. My results, I'm a side sleeper and they had me in this bad boy, the bear original king size foam mattress. It was ridiculously easy to set up. I've had it for a month now and I love sleeping on it. I wake up refreshed and ready to crush the day pain free. And my guests really like it too. <laughs> and with Bear's sleep recovery technology, salient powered fabric helps me stay cool throughout the night. Still deciding on letting the dog, okay, I let the dog up here, and that's good to know. Unlike other brands, Bear mattresses also do not contain fiberglass, which can be detrimental to your health. The best part about all this is Bear Mattress delivers to your door with free shipping in the US and they let you try it for 120 nights so you can make sure you love it. And they offer a lifetime warranty with financing options and flexible payment plans. I love my Bear Mattress and I think you would too. This month, Bear is giving my viewers 40% off their Bear Mattress purchase, which is higher than anything they are offering and have ever offered on site. This will expire at the end of the month, so visit bearmattress.com forward slash five points to claim your 40% off. Again, that's bearmattress.com forward slash five points to claim your 40% off. Number five, whoever thought Kenny Pickett made this first down. Last week, the refs were complete trash. They were missing calls like their notifications were silenced. And in this home game for the Steelers that was played in LA, they definitely got some home cooking from the refs. After mid-level and talenting their way to a 24 to 17 lead over a decent Rams team, the Steelers got the ball back with 528 left in the game. To their credit, they picked up a huge first down, got LA to eat their timeouts and whittled down the clock until they faced a fourth and one. Matt Canada, having seen the tush push from his hated neighbors to the east, thought that they could do that. And anyone with eyeballs could see that Kenny Pickett is shorter than a midget on his knees of the first down, but the Steelers were given a spot so generous they were able to write it off on their taxes as a charitable donation. Seriously, just like you, this thing was at least six inches short, and what's funnier, they even measured it, and well, first down, game over. Still first down. The result, first down. Still first down. Result of the play will be a first down. Whatever Steeler voodoo Mike Tomlin has going for this team, which is somehow four and two, please throw some of that towards my dating life. But still refs, on this call, you were trash. Number four, Justin Fields. Wow, Justin Fields didn't even play and he is catching bullets. Why? Because Tyson Bajent, that's why. Bajent, which rhymes with agent, the undrafted rookie out of Tiny Shepherd University in West Virginia, found himself starting against a 500 Raiders team that was looking to log an easy win against the shitty fucking Bears. And that didn't happen. So why does Justin Fields suck? Well, Bajent looked more confident, competent, and remarkably athletic in the bear system that for most of the year has had Justin Fields looking like a toddler lost in a shopping mall. Sure, he got 159 yards rushing from someone not named Bajan, but he added 24 yards on the ground of his own along with 21 of 29 passing, 162 yards, and a TD. Oh, and the Bears did not have to trade up for this dude. They probably found him at a bus station in Wheeling, ready to head back to the coal mine. 
Now the Bears really have to evaluate Fields, which they have been doing all year long, but this does not help him at all. However, if the Bears were smart, they'd put Fields back out there as soon as he's healthy and roll the takes. The writing's on the wall. Justin Fields is probably not coming back. Sorry, he trashed. Number three, the Bills defense late. For not just years, decades, the New England Patriots humiliated and destroyed the Bills on their way to championships, pissing on them like they were a special guest on Epstein Island. So when the Bills got to come into Foxborough to face a limping one and five Pats team, you thought, you thought some payback was in order. Well, not so freaking fast. The Pats got out in front and stayed there for pretty much the whole game, but the Bills, who seemed to be taking a page from the late 2010 Steelers of playing down to their competition and then having their talent bail them out, pulled ahead late and seemingly had it all wrapped up. Not so fast. This play, the first play of the drive, was devastating, a 34-yard pass to Ramondre Stevenson. Ramondre is a really cool name, by the way. And then eight plays later, Mac Jones found Mike Gusecki and Buffalo, you are such trash for allowing Mike Gusecki to unleash this gritty upon us. Seriously, that I had about as much rhythm as a corpse being electrocuted. Don't look now, Bills, you're four and three, and while you're still a good team, that was a trash loss. Number two, whatever the Lions were doing. Speaking of teams that are looking to get to the next level, it's so bizarre that we would even have next level and the Lions in the same sentence. However, after last week, people were talking Super Bowl, and this week, it's time to cool that down like a Tux medicated pad on an inflamed booty hole. Whatever the Lions were doing Sunday against the Ravens they don't want to do ever again as they got dog walked and they were in the hole 35 points before the fourth quarter even started we know the Ravens have a good defense but nobody saw the high power Lions offense not be able to do much except shuffle between the 20s like a stripper after her shift the Lions are still good but man y'all sucked on Sunday and finally our number one you trash slash you suck for week seven the Packers of Green Bay. Look, Grossi and Perna are going to break this game down way better than I possibly can, so you can check out their analysis after this video. What I can analyze is that this Packer team is bad. Oh, did you not try to repeat the whole Aaron Rodgers thing by nursing Jordan Love along four years or whatever? But really, I'm learning that when it comes to the sit or start debate, it's on the QB to be good. And Jordan Love up to this point is not good. Now, it's pretty telling that the only entertaining thing to come out of this game was Jerry Judy getting punched in his dick by Carrington Valentine. This was a Steelers versus Dolphins Monday night level ugly game. And Jordan Love capped it off with a terrible late interception that has Packers fan keeling over like Jerry G. Yeah, that's a cheap joke. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna use it. This game was quite winnable for the Pack and they just plain sucked against a one win team. Tom Grassi, for all the shit you've talked over the years, welcome to the pain. Until next week, y'all suck. Is this an AFC West thing? We're just gonna just throw bad interceptions to end the game. We are bad. We won? Oh. And here I was thinking we were bad, which we are, but Packers. Oof.